Hi students, in today's class we are going to discuss about the Allied paper Social History of England. We would deal with Industrial Revolution Unit 3. Let us see the outline picture of Industrial Revolution. Conditions before the Industrial Revolution, cause of the revolution, textile industry, transport, results of the revolution that is merits and the demerits. Features of Industrial Revolution. Production in revolutionized, peaceful and evolutionary, from cottage to factory, large-scale production and divisions of labor. Yes, the Industrial Revolution is the name given to a series of changes that brought about a transition from production by hand to production by machine, from small-scale production to large-scale production, from handmade goods to machine-made goods. The Industrial Revolution revolutionized methods of production. Machine work, machine work replaced handwork and incredibly tremendous production was possible. Reasons for the emergence of the Industrial Revolution in England. Capital for the investigating in the means of production. Colonies and markets for manufactured goods. Raw materials for production. Workers. Merchant marine. And the geographical condition of England. Yes, the Industrial Revolution began in England. It is difficult to say when exactly it started. In later medieval England, there were a few original thinkers and scientists who believed in careful observation, laboratory experimentation and searching inquiry. Forces like the Renaissance were highly favorable to the growth of the scientific spirit and England was fortunate to have everything that was needed for an industrial revolution. The English people were enterprising in many fields, in sailing in ships, in colonizing, in organizing trade and commerce, in empire building and in other activities. The English people distinguished themselves and in other activities the English people and they, this explains why the people in small island like England could become the leaders of the field of the industrial revolution. Conditions before the industrial revolution. Now we can discuss about how England were before the in industrial revolution. Before the industrial revolution, the woolen industry was concentrated in the west of England. It was controlled by a small number of merchant employers. They supplied the works with the raw materials or yarn and the workers made it into the cloth in their homes. The employers then took the cloth and sold it in the market. In this domestic system of industry, the workers were wage earners with no land and with no other sources of income. Coal and mining and iron industry was also capitalized industry. For a long time, charcoal was used for the smelting of iron. The Derby family had discovered a new method of using coal coke to the smelting of iron and this led to the development of the iron industry in the coal iron belt. Roads and rivers were the means of communication within the country. The roads were unfit for wheel traffic. Goods were sent from one part of the country to other on horses. Just before the industrial revolution, cotton goods were a serious rival to woolen cloths. Cotton industry was growing with the rival of a raw cotton from America, but woolen industry was a national industry. Now, causes of the industrial revolution. There were many factors responsible for the dawn of industrial revolution in England. Unlike other European countries, there existed freedom of thought and expression in England. There was ample scope for experimentation. No unreasonable restrictions were laid on the particular system of manufacture. In the second half of the 18th century, there was an increase of the population and the demand for goods increased. Necessity became the mother of invention. New machines were invented to produce goods on a large scale. For introducing economic changes, political stability is essential. There was a political stability in England which was not found in other countries. In Britain, there was an accumulation of capital which was necessary for industrial expansion. The great trading companies brought profits to Britain and there was a flow of wealth from India. All along the coast of England were excellent harbours with the trade routes leading to all parts of the world. England was noted for its supply of coal, iron and water power. These are the nature's gift of England. Feudalism has disappeared early in England. A plenty of men were available for work in factories. England had many colonies abroad and these supplied plenty of raw materials. They also become the market where the manufactured articles could be sold. The other countries had these factors in varying degrees and starting of industrial revolution dependent on them. Inventions. And there was a demand for cotton goods. 
cotton had been had been spun quickly into thread and woven quickly into cloth the first invention nearly appeared in the 18th century in the cotton industry lancashire had ideal climate for cotton spinning the first invention was the flying shuttle by john kay in 1733 which helped to wave the cloth at a greater speed it made the waving a broad cloth by one man in 1770 james harvick invented the spinning jenny which could spin eight threads at the same time soon after this came the textile machine known as water twist by arkwright and the machine was operated by the water power and not by hand after some time spinning jenny and water twist were combined into a spinning mule by samuel crampton this was followed by power loom invented by edmund cartwright weaving was a very quickly done and another machine had to be invented to remove the cotton seeds from the cotton this was the cotton gim invented by whitney in 1793 this did the work of a 50 labors naturally more cotton had to be grown imported england become a leading country in textile industry cylinder printing was invented in 1785 and bleaching with the help of chemicals came into practice in 1800 by about 1846 the sewing machine was invented and woven cotton was quickly made into a beautiful cloth for people to wear industrial revolution progressed by leaps and bounds because of the invention of a steam engine when industry depended upon water power alone factories had to be built near streams or rivers when steam power was discovered factories could be built anywhere james watt Uh, was the most important engineer who invented the steam power and engine the new machinery of course involved the use of iron and steel and here the actual creation of the machine was made possible by the development of in iron fields more iron was needed to make a machines and more coal was needed to get the steam power manufacturers now wanted better machines as steel is lighter stronger and more elastic and does not rust they were in a greater demand the use of coal for smelting of iron was discovered by derby owing to an improvement in blast the iron and steel industry was promoted yes steam engines now we can see the role of the steam engines new commons engine was found to be too slow in working moreover it required too much coal it needed alternate heating and cooling the cylinder for the working of the piston for pumping out water a far better engine known as the bills pump was produced by james watt in 1769 with assistance of matthew blunton this was patent engine and had a separate condenser for cooling the steam and an airtight jacket for keeping the cylinder continuously hot it had greater speed consumed less coal and was economical as improved version could be used for pumping water moving pedal wheels in ships running machines operating spindles and uh, in textile mills and other process the industrial revolution would not have been possible without tremendous changes in the coal and iron industry in making machines wood had to be replaced by a strong material having durability and capable of for bearing heavy strain this material was iron fortunately england had a some uh, ample deposits of iron and coal replaced charcoal safety in uh, originally charcoal was used for melting the crude ore before smelting that is separating the metal from the impurity the supply of charcoal had fallen steeply as more and more forest were being cleared and coal was being increasingly used coal was far better than charcoal as it could produce a greater heat wood as a fuel made a very poor show in industrial production and it and its use made the process very costly therefore in the later days coals completely replaced charcoals the revolution took place in transport also the roads before the middle of the 18th century were impassable during the rainy season when as a result of the revolution goods were produced on a large scale the need was felt for transporting goods to cities or seaports the end of the 18th century saw the development of roads and canals and every part of the 19th century witnessed the development of railways madclaff and telford built many roads in north england to transport goods 
Megdam discovered a new method of road laying. The new roads, Megdamized roads, as they were called, had a hard surface based on a small stones crushed by heavily steam roller. Side by side with the construction of roads, canals were dug for carrying a heavy materials like coal and iron. The Duke of Bridgewater and his assistant Brindley, who was an engineer, constructed a canal connecting the coal pit in 1759. In, 50, in the 50 years following 1760, many canals were constructed by many people and this is known as the canal mania of the 18th century. The Duke of Bridgewater is known as the father of inland navigation but it is more correct to call him the father of canal navigation. In the earlier 19th century, George Stephenson invented the railway engine and the first railway ran between Stockhunt and Darlington in 1825. Stephenson later invented a steam engine called the rocket which, which ran at a speed of 56 km per hour. Soon a number of companies were started and they constructed a railway lines connecting the different parts of the country. From 1840, under the leadership of the George Hudson, the railway king, the general public plunked headlong towards the construction of railway lines. This railway mania of the 19th century was similar to the canal mania of the 18th century. Towards the middle of the 19th century, steam ships came into use and they carried goods to the different parts of the world. Yes, now we'll see the outcome of the results, the results of the industrial revolution. First, we'll see the merits. The revolution at first brought about unsettlement, distress and misery to the labors. The use of machines threw many labors out of employment, but owing to the use of machines, a manufactured product was sold at a cheap price. This led to an increased demand and that in turn led to the starting of the many factories and the employment of more labors than before. There was a large-scale production. Britain captured the world market and became the workshop of the world. Britain's economy strength was one of the factors which contributed to the downfall of the Napoleon. Capitalism taught organization, cooperation, efficiency and punctuality. The revolution showed how wealth could be produced with the help of machine, coal and steam and therefore responsible for raising the standard of people. The new industrial towns were not represented in Parliament, so the agitation of Parliament reforms began, which ended in England become a perfect democracy. Demerits in the, in the factories, conditions of work were miserable. The labourers had to work long hours amidst unhygienic conditions for a low wages. Lord Shaftesbury made speeches in Parliament telling the members about the miserable condition and hence in a series of factor, factory acts were passed by Parliament. The revolution was responsible for the conflict between capital and labour which could be witnessed even today. England specialised in industries and neglected agriculture. So she lost her self-sufficiency and has to depend for foods on other countries. The revolution destroyed the influence of the agriculture classes in society and politics and brought into being a new middle class called bourgeois. Capitalism led to the imperialism. Capitalist countries wanted a raw materials for manufacture and markets to sell the manufactured goods. They wanted to take possession of a weak countries which led to the inter international rivalries. Yes, after the industrial revolution, England had started its imperialism. Imperialism means is a policy of extending a country's power. So, so only we call the sun never sets in England because it had colonized whole of the world. For example, India, England, India, Australia, all these countries had become colonies for England. Yes, additional information for you. It was the most and the first important exhibition of the world about industries and culture. It was made in Hyde Park in London. Yes, before I tell you, thank you. Let me recap everything. That is what had happened in the Industrial Revolution. First, we'll saw, we, had, we were discussing about 
the introduction part and the conditions before the industrial revolution causes of the industrial revolution cause of the industrial revolutions in that cause we have discussed it about textile industry and transport and the results of the revolution we have seen the merits of the demerits at last england started its imperialism after the industrial revolution